Ken Mansfield has had the kind of career many of us dream about. He's a Grammy Award-winning record producer and the former U.S. manager of the Beatles' Apple Records. He's worked and partied with the four lads from England and wrote a book about it, The Beatles, The Bible, and Bodega Bay. We recently talked about his newest book, Rock and a Heart Place. Ken chronicles the lives of 12 rock and roll stars who discovered that fame only left them empty. These are stories of a number of artists came out of the rock and roll world and how God affected their lives. In right. fact, one of the stories in here is about my wife, Nedra, who was with the Ronettes. Exactly. Name some of them. Well, everybody from Chris Hillman with The Bird, Mark Farner from Grand Funk Railroad, Ed Ross from The Ronettes, Richie Ferre from Poco, Des Dickerson from Prince. And Ruth Pointer. And Ruth Pointer from the Pointer Sisters, of course. Right. Brian Head Welch from uh, Corn. When fame hits. Right. I don't know how many of them are really ready for it and Nobody what it is. does to them. Nobody understands the road unless they've been on the road. And the road can be your sweetheart. It can be your, your most wonderful moments. But one day the road becomes a prison out there. And you find out all of a sudden, here I am. I'm in a hotel room. My family's someplace else. I'm in this separate reality. And then all of a sudden these guys, they get off the private jets and the, the big, you know, the 100,000 people coming to the concerts, they go home they have this new reality to adjust to back and forth like that. Another thing you talk about in the book is the ego, self-aggrandizement. All of that business, I mean, what, what does that do to an individual's soul, if you will? Yeah, ego stands for edging God out, by the way. Does it? <laughs> well, yeah. I think it does. Yeah, that's good. It's good. You get so full of yourself, you have no room for him in there. Yeah, but you on the road, you have people telling how wonderful you are, everything's taken care of. And pretty soon you start believing it, that yes, mm. I am special. Yes, I am different. It's interesting, a number of these people you write about talk about their lives in church right. back then. You did yourself. You, yes. you were raised in church yes. and things of God. Uh, I mean, what happened? So many of us, the people in the book, had an upbringing where it was such a fire and brimstone type thing. And uh, when we left home, we couldn't wait to get away from that. When the Lord confronted you with who you were, right? what happened? I was brought to my knees through everything falling apart and through all these disasters in my life. And the simple message was, here I am, and uh, I'm not doing such a good job with my life. And I was presented with an alternative, and it worked. Do you think these folks appreciate their salvation in a way that other people don't? Yes, I do. Once you've been in the mire and been all the way down there, and then when you come out and you experience your salvation and there's this change in your life, it's not like you're any more saved than anybody else. I just think that the contrast is so extreme that you really kind of appreciate it more, you know? 